All right, I'm going to show you how to check the fuel pressure on your uh, 7.3 liter. Uh, a couple things you're going to need before you can get started. You're going to need an adapter uh, for the fuel bowl and a Schrader valve to go on the other end of that adapter. Uh, that Schrader valve is going to connect to a uh, fuel injection pressure gauge just like this one you see here. Um, you got to make sure it's a fuel injection pressure gauge and that it's rated for uh, obviously fuel. You're not going to want to use a, um, an air pressure gauge. They just uh, they won't hold up. And uh, so just get one like this. This one's actually a little short. You can see the hose is probably only about a little more than a foot long. Um, for best results, you're going to want one that's long enough that you can uh, snake through up the hood here so that you can see um, while you're driving. I can't do that, um, but I'm just going to show you how to hook it up and get you an idle reading. Uh, but like I said, the best readings are uh, while on power, not just on idle. Um, so I'll go, sh go ahead and show you how to hook that up now. Now to install the this little, this little contraption right here of the adapter and trader valve, you are going to need to drain the fuel bowl. Uh, you do that by releasing the little yellow lever that's right next to uh, these fuel ports, and that's going to drain out the uh, the bottom. You can put a a uh, little rubber hose on the end of the drain uh, tube to catch the fuel, so you don't make a mess. And uh, once that's empty, you can go ahead and take the drain or uh, the uh, plug on the back of the fuel bowl off with a 3 16 allen wrench and then you're going to go ahead and uh, screw in the adapter and the Schrader valve. There's two ports you can use. I've got mine in the pre-filter port and the other one is the post-filter port. Uh, this one is on the is easier to get to. It's on the upside, um, about an inch or two away from the uh, the drain valve towards the driver's side. The other one is below the uh, drain valve uh, on the passenger side of the fuel bowl, right where the fuel lines exit to go to the heads. Uh, so to uh, so to measure your fuel pressure, all you got to do you're going to take, once you've installed your adapter and your Schrader valve, take the little cover off, and you're just going to take your fuel gauge and pretty much stick it on there. Now, I read somewhere that you probably shouldn't leave your Schrader valves on all the time, that they're just not designed to... Uh, just not designed to do that, which, you know, fair argument. Um, I've left mine on there for probably six months, haven't had any problems, um, but someday I do plan on uh, taking it off and replacing the, uh, the fuel bowl plug. Just not today. And there you go. Now I've got that on, and I'm going to go ahead and start up and show you the, uh, the gauge. That's about what you want to be seeing. Uh, it was reading about 55 at idle. Uh, what you're looking for is you're looking for 60 psi, give or take about 10 uh, psi either side. Um, that's really the comfort zone you want to be in. Um, obviously, on power, that's going to change a little bit. It's going to go down a little bit on power because um, these are electric pumps. They just supply a constant uh, supply all the time. Um, so on power, you're gonna, your pressure is going to dip a little bit, and you can just experiment uh, before and after filter, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, I, I prefer the pre-filter set. I can really measure just how the, uh, the uh, pump is doing, and maybe uh, the only thing I have to worry about is maybe some restrictions in the fuel line or the screens in the tank. I'm not worrying about how dirty the actual fuel filter is. Um, the other, the other uh, gauge port will take that into account as well. Um, so that's about all you need to do. It's pretty simple. Uh, now you can just take the gauge off and leave the Schrader valve on if you want. Like I said, uh, I read uh, somewhere that that's probably not the best thing to do. That's what I've done. I've had no problems, no leaks. Um, but that's not to say it won't uh, explode on me someday in the future. Um, so uh, you can either replace that, that uh, little plug or just leave it there. Um, 
and that's all you uh, need to do. I, for a more permanent solution, I would suggest getting an in-cab one. Uh, that's probably your best option, but for just day-to-day -day diagnostics, this is perfectly fine.